Right now I am in the build process of a new charger array for uh, my flying chair and also for the inflatable car project. Uh, so I thought that I would take the opportunity to show you both the old array and the new array and also um, talk a little bit about how I'm reasoning when I'm doing my design choices. Let's uh, start out with checking out this old charger array. It consists of 20 small turning E chargers. Uh, they are unfortunate, unfortunately no longer for sale so I cannot just replace uh, the bad ones. Uh, and the reason that I'm building a new array is that I burnt some of these uh, during my first charge cycle of the inflatable car project battery pack. So uh, this little hefty bugger is about one kilowatt of usable uh, energy in this. Uh, was connected in uh, series via uh, this loop here. So, so at the end here of the, uh, the socket here, you have like 250 volts or so. And uh, for a moment there, I just stopped thinking, and uh, I I let uh, let the battery pack in the with the series connecting uh, loop. So some of the chargers saw the full 250 volt uh, uh, voltage, and of course they fried. So that's my bad. Uh, but anyway, uh, that happened, so I have to uh, to uh, rebuild it. Before we take a look at the uh, new charger array build, I just thought that I would say something about these old chargers, because of course I have learned something by, by building the, this charger array. These chargers are uh, the B4 turning chargers. They are uh, they sit in a plastic casing, and that's not really great because uh, they do generate quite a lot of heat during the charging process uh, and it's kind of hard for them to, to let out that uh, hot air. But you can see that it's uh, slightly see-throughable, it, it has several slots here. Uh, but the bad thing with um, stacking them like this and they being enclosed in a plastic casing is that the top chargers get really hot, both from the rising hot air uh, and from the uh, heat generated inside. So the top ones start to malfunction after a couple of cycles. Um, when I started using this array for two years ago. Uh, but the simple fix is to add an ordinary household fan, just forcing air through it. Uh, and I have not had a breakdown uh, because of uh, high temperatures since that. Uh, so that worked. Um, another not too great thing is that you only have uh, LEDs that indicate uh, the charging process. So you cannot monitor uh, single cell voltages. But they do tell you when it's charging and when it's balance charging and when they are ready. So they're doing their job. Uh, a good thing with these are that they only beep like once when you start them up and they play a tune when they are ready. They do not continue beeping um, after they are done charging. And that's kind of important because it's super annoying to have multiple beeps all the time uh, when you're charging your batteries, when you are handling so many batteries uh, as I'm doing. Yeah, uh, I think that's that. Uh, let, let's uh, have a look at the uh, the new chargers. So these are the chargers that goes into the new charger array. They are actually slightly smaller, slightly cheaper, and it's slightly less powerful. I think it's uh, this is thirty watt, and the old one was uh, thirty five watt, but that's uh, not that's not a big deal. It, it will charge about the same. Uh, the same speed and uh, you need approximately the same type of power supply, uh, powering 20 of these. A very good thing with these are that they are enclosed in an aluminum casing, so they have a uh, fair chance of getting rid of the heat. They still do heat up significantly, so I would expect that I would need uh, some sort of uh, forced air blowing through the array uh, with these as well. Uh, a, uh, another good thing is that they indeed do have a display showing each and every single cell voltage. So you can monitor every cell in this setup. Uh, and that's, that's a good thing, especially uh, during long, long time use. Uh, and also since I do not have a onboard battery management system, uh, I do want to be able to check the cells uh, after I have flown so that I know that uh, they are in decent condition. Uh, yeah, and as I mentioned, the size is smaller, so the whole array will be 
significant to smaller as well, which, which is a, a nice, nice feature. It's not necessarily uh, super important, but it helps. It helps um, managing managing your charger in the in the uh, workshop. Uh, one bad thing with these are that they do beep excessively. So when they are ready, they just continue beeping, telling you that they are ready. And since these are hobby grade batteries, uh, chances are that these cells have a significant uh, a variation in between themselves. So some of these battery packs will be charged pretty fast and some might come in one hour later. Uh, so you'll have like a one hour of constant beeping from uh, 18 of these <laughs> before the last two uh, reaches their uh, maximum voltage. So the simple fix for that is to just loosen the two upper screws uh, loosening this lid and you can simply jank out the speaker in these and they still work after that so that's good. <laughs> so I've done that with all the 20 uh, chargers I'm uh, using in my current array. Uh, okay so that's that's the uh, the good and the bad uh, with the array. Let's uh, take a look at the, uh, the uh, part of the array that's ready that I'm using right now. Here it is, the actual seat of the flying chair. Uh, the backrest is over here and you can see that I am charging the uh, aft batteries here and the charger chargers has done their job so they are actually ready. They are fully charged, the aft battery bank. Uh, and just enjoy the silence they would typically be beeping now, but since I have removed all the speakers inside, they're just indicating with the, visually that they are ready. Uh, you can see here that I have um, I hold the charges in place with the uh, aluminum square tubing, uh, which further increases the ability of uh, disposing the heat that uh, comes out here. And uh, the tubing is 15 by 15 millimeters, and that's uh, I think the uh, smallest distance you need. Uh, to be able to also read the screens on the chargers because you do want to be able to read the the individual uh, cell voltages uh, and this uh, bar here both uh, lets the air come through here and you can uh, monitor the cell voltages so that works out uh, well uh, the, since there are 20 chargers here and there are 20 cells in each battery I'm only uh, or 20 battery packs in each uh, big pack. I'm only charging half of them and uh, when they're ready as they are now I simply switch over from this uh, connector here to this one and I do one more charging cycle. So my plan is to build a identical uh, version of this and place it over here with the two more power supplies so that I, I can charge uh, half the battery packs simultaneously and then do one swap uh, of the uh, 50 pin connectors and then charge the other half and then you're done. Uh, so I expect that to be pretty uh, convenient to use. Uh, the power supplies here are rated at 23 amps and um, each charger is uh, 30 watt and they're rated for 350 watt. So uh, 10 of these are 300 watt and it can deliver 350 watts. Uh, but in real life I measured the current draw to be about 1.7 amps per charger times 10. So 17 amps is the actual current draw. This is supposed to be able to deliver uh, 23 amps. So I think I'm good. However, I expect the fans in these ones to run uh, almost constantly. Okay, so I think that's pretty much it. I have a um, couple of clips uh, that's showing uh, when I'm assembling this uh, structure here that I'm going to show you. And um, other than that, I think uh, that's all for now. See you later.